I've recorded every single Mythic Plus key that I've attempted in Season 3, and in this series I'm going to cover the highs and lows of each dungeon on my way to pugging to the 0.1% title. At the end of last episode, we ended on a deplete of a 26 Waycrest mana, so in this episode, we're going to run it back, a 26 Waycrest mana here that we actually end up timing. Outside in the courtyard, we had a little bit of the blame game going on. The, the Boomy ended up dying to an infected thorn, I believe, and he tried to blame me and somebody else in the group, I guess maybe the Shaman, for not kicking, but my kick was already on cooldown. My kick did come off cooldown just towards the end of this pack, but by that time, the Boomy had already died. So it was a nice try on the blame game. Here, I don't really want to blame this on the plate of profile that I've got, but I didn't know what color stood for which type of mob. So I ended up sending my Call of the Wild on three maggots. I definitely didn't read what kind of mobs we were fighting here. I just saw five or six mobs in total. So I sent my Call of the Wild on cooldown. Super troll from me considering that Bloodlust was also coming up as well. So I should have definitely saved it for that that we are going to use on the Goliath. The chamois kept dying over the course of the key. I mean, I do feel bad for him. Being a chamois in these high keys, especially fortified, must be rough. I, d I don't even necessarily think he could have played better. He just ended up getting one shot by stuff. We ended up going down the stairs after Rao instead of going to through the kitchen because of the maggots. The maggots are honestly the scariest mob in this key. Although they don't have a lot of health, they're just going to one shot you if two or three of them stack up on you with the spits. We went down into the cellar with quite a lot of time left to be fair. Like we got two, four to five bosses left. We got 12 minutes left. So in this area, personally, I would have played it a lot safer. But instead, we go for a big pull. We pull everything down here pretty much except the one witch in the corner. Again, the chamois dies. Somebody's kind of bound to die down here especially in a pug there's just too much kicks to coordinate but only having one death on a 26 fortified down here without lust you have to kind of take those honestly we move on to the last boss with around five minutes left plenty of time to kill this boss so we take it slow it was relatively scuffed we didn't always manage to kill the ads but with around three minutes left and 11 deaths we do end up timing the key for this key, we go up to 3,310, getting four score out of this 26 Waycrest. Again, minimal score gains. Blizzard, I need those bigger numbers. I need that dopamine in my veins. Now, moving on to a 25 Dark Heart Thicket. And we had a pre-made group here. I believe that the Demon Hunter, Windwalker, and Evoker were all teamed up together, probably in Discord with each other as well. Then they recruited the Resto Druid in, and for whatever reason, he decided that he was going to take control of this run. He probably does it in every run, to be fair. But he was telling us exactly the route to play, even though they had already linked the route. He was telling us which mobs to focus. I mean, obviously, in a 25, you'd think that we'd know which mobs to focus. And the key started off quite scuffed. We tried to skip the bears, but the tank couldn't die before the roar went off, so that got us all in combat. So we did end up wiping the healer ran back and rezzed us, and then we went into the boss. He took every leap on the first boss. Druids are quite good for that, they can just drop into bear form every single time. After the first boss, we do an interesting pull. We pull the three pack just after. Now, it is a bit of a time waste to just do these by themselves, but if you're going to pull the other pack as well, we need to be focusing the Dryad. If we've got two Dryads up throwing those spears, it's going to cause a lot of problems. The Druid does end up rooting it in the back, but eventually it does come in. Again, we had the Resto Druid spamming how we should all be playing here. He was backseating the lot of us. And let me tell you, if he spent more time healing and doing damage, instead of just typing out paragraphs throughout the whole dungeon, this key would have been a whole lot cleaner. On to Oakheart, again with the disengages on the crushing grips, just avoiding that damage. Sometimes it's hard to execute, but the further you are away from the boss, the easier it is because of the travel time from the throw. We did end up letting a Blood Metamorphosis cast go off like bots. So we did have to kill another Fury. The theme of this dungeon continues. The healer keeps spamming, typing during the dragon boss. Like in a 25, he's telling us to spread out so that we don't drop the pools on party members. Like, come on. We all know what we're doing in this key. You don't need to be wasting your time typing these messages. Like you're doing 10k overall on a resto druid DPS wise. Please just press some buttons and do some damage to help speed up this key instead of trying to play the key for the whole group. To be honest, it wasn't actually tilting me that much because I just ignored him and we were kind of taking the mick out of him on stream. <laughs> but I imagine this pre-made group was tilting their heads off in Discord, like just telling this guy to shut up. Nevertheless, we did end up taking down Dresseron and I don't know if you guys have ever seen this seasonal affix before, but it's actually the girlfriend seasonal affix. It's just an IRL distraction actually. 
at this point, because the key felt like it was going so badly because of how much he was typing, I didn't even realize that this was a timeable key. We went into the last boss with around three minutes left, so it was on the tighter side. The healer and the monk did end up dying too, and the tank called out the healer on the last boss to please do some DPS. <laughs> But we did manage to time the key with around five seconds left. So it was very, very close. If one more person had died on that last fight, then it might have been GG's. And then they exchanged some nice words with the healer after the fight. Less typing, more damage, 24-7 writing, 10k DPS, the list goes on. But we do time the key and get eight score out of it, taking us up to 3,318. Thought I'd quickly just show the life of a hunter right here. Spend half an hour signing up to groups, get into a group finally. It's either gonna deplete or we get a message like this saying, sorry hunt, friend is coming. So I get kicked out of the group. Hopefully they depleted. Pugging is definitely rough as a non-meta class. BM hunter is like relatively close to being meta, but even then, I'm spending half an hour to an hour signing up to all these groups, getting declined left, right and center. I finally get into the groups and then they deplete on like the first pool. Speaking of, here we have a 26 black rook hold. We had a weird, weird route for this one. I seem to remember people doing this route back in Legion, but I just don't think it's the play because if you die like we do in this key, it's pretty much over. So we skip the first two packs, go straight into the mini boss with Lust here. The tank turns the mini boss just before his strike down straight into the Windwalker, so he gets one shot by that. The healer then dies to a soul blade into a glaive toss while rezzing the Windwalker monk. They both get taken out by that. So now we have no healer for the rest of this pool. I end up slowly ticking out to the soul blade. If leech worked for BM hunters, then I probably wouldn't have died here and I would have just been able to sustain myself a bit. But instead, my pets just leech to themselves. Pog champ. And then after waiting for like two minutes, the healer just randomly releases his spirit. So he gets stuck on the other side of the mobs that we've just skipped. Make it make sense. I release, but I have camouflage to get back to the group. Then me and the tank decide to go back and help the guys kill the mob so that they can get through. We end up wiping to it and that is the key. Over. Very, very fun. I mean, that is what I've waited an hour to sign up to. You love to see it. No idea why we did this route, especially in a pug. Like, that is just not it. But on to the next one. Here we have a 26 Throne of the Tides. We did have a nice group for this key. I definitely need to get better at dealing with the dogs. I panic way too much. I need to be more prepared with a binding shot, put a tar trap down in advance, get ready with an intimidation stun. We do the standard massive pull upstairs and I end up turtling the crushing depths. Always keep an eye on where those crushing depths are going on and pray that it's on you as a hunter as long as you've got your turtle up. I mean, sometimes we are a good class to get it on anyway, because we've got two self heals with Exil and Fortitude of the Bear. Up the top, we took the Ravager solo, which I don't think you want to do in these high keys. I think it's too much of a time sink. But Seb does get taken out by the Acid Barrage. And then we get shafted by Seb getting stuck in combat, so he can't take the elevator back up. So we have to wait an eternity for him to get back to us. We lost a lot of time here. Obviously, it's not Seb's fault that he got the bug. That is on Blizzard. We did end up losing a lot of time here, which probably cost us the key. This is a tight timer in Throne of the Tides. I ended up dying on the first boss to the cringe blue overlap. Well, I don't know why this is even still a thing, but you get the shock blast on you. Sometimes it overlaps with the geysers and you have a light blue swirly all over you. And then you have light blue swirlies underneath that will one shot you. I don't like, I do not understand it, Blizzard. Why are they the exact same color? It's mental. I don't know if I'm just blind. Maybe it's just me. But if you're directly stood on top of one where it's even lighter blue in the middle, you can barely see under you. So I get taken out by that. Back down the stairs, I didn't realize here, but you can actually use the pillars on the left and right to line of sight the spears. So I was using these pillars to the best of my ability, just weaving in and out of them. So that is definitely something I'd recommend doing on higher keys because those goblins are arguably one of the scariest mobs in this dungeon. The loss was kind of awkward here. I see what we were doing. We were going to get two blood lust before the key was over, but I didn't have my cooldowns up for this in sync with this. So we probably lost a lot of damage and time from that. Flame Shock was slapping on the Mindbender boss. In the gauntlet with a passive cleave from Ignite, the corruptions were just passively dying. So we did end up racking up about 10 stacks when the swell went off. I realized this and typed the quickest turtle message I've ever typed in my life so that the healer didn't need to focus on me at all. And somehow he sustained the group through it. What a chad. And then our route was to skip the last goblins and go straight into the last two sentries. 
Unfortunately, Seb managed to get aggro just before he invis potted. I don't really know what happened here, but I guess because he got aggro, he brought them right on top of me and then they saw me in camouflage. And as I got punched out of camouflage, I ran into the Aqua Mage pack and they all saw me. The key probably wasn't timeable anyway, like we've only got three and a half minutes left here to do the boss and two sentries. So yeah, almost definitely not timeable. Pretty happy with the amount of damage I was doing in this dungeon though. Almost a 400k overall by the end of this. 100k more than the mage. The mage was a great player as well. But yeah, Beast Mastery does slap in Throne. Jumping ourselves into a 26 black rook hold then, super nice key. Upstairs the healer did end up dying, I don't think the tank realised because he chained this last champion into the next pack. There is a lot of unavoidable damage going out here so this definitely could have ended up in more deaths or even a wipe. Especially with a companion jumping about, fortunately for us it went on both of the demon hunters so they can just leech through it and heal themselves. Here you'll see what I mean about the change to Brutal Glaive. You used to be able to feign death it and it would cancel the mechanic, but now it just seems to retarget. So here it cleaved through melee instead, so in future I will not be pressing feign death on this fight unless I absolutely need to. Lots of sanguine enjoyment upstairs. This corridor is my favourite place in the game for sanguine. Seb ended up dying back to back on the third boss and nobody was soaking for him on the hateful charges. I was reading chat for one of them so I definitely could have saved, but also... I was half expecting the Demon Hunter too because he's got Blur on a shorter cooldown. Onto the last boss, the first phase wasn't actually that scary, but the second phase got a little bit scary. The Demon Hunter died because I had no damage. I also had no damage for my own swarm and I was obviously getting constantly stunned. And then luckily the tank did end up soloing. We got 8 score out of that Black Rook hold, taking us up to 3,326. We were kind of going on a spree here of actually timing quite a few of the keys we were getting into. Almost a 400k overall, beating the Demon Hunter here. You know the drill. Running up a 25 Everbloom here, or at least trying. We had a Guardian Druid here, which was interesting. So the tank asked me to use the Cunning Pet here to freedom him. So I got some practice in with that. It's something that I've wanted to do anyway. I was just very nervous to do it because I don't know what amount of stacks I should be using it on. I was going for around 8 to 10 stacks that I could use the Master's Call, but it does have like a 40 second cooldown. Again, Priests desyncing their power infusion with my Call of the Wild. I just don't think a lot of them know that we've actually now got a 2 minute cooldown that they can sync it up with every single time. Tried the skip just before the Council Boss, which never, never, ever goes well. Somebody always ends up pulling. Straight onto the Council Boss, the Demon Hunter looks like he gets aggro here and he gets one or two banged by it. Then the Priest dies, he gets cast back to back on him. I don't know whose fault you could say this was because the Demon Hunter has his kick off of cooldown. But we do have a Toxic Bloom coming up in a second. And also, the Priest just wasn't using any of his cooldowns here. Like, he's still got two Pain Sups. He's got his Desperate Prayer. And he's also got his Barrier. So we CR him. And then the DH dies again. At this point, the key's over anyway. Like, we've only got 12 minutes left to do 30%. And also finish three bosses. So, not, so I'd kind of given up already in my head. But yeah, we just wiped anyway. Move on to another interesting key. We got another 25 Dark Heart Thicket here. The tank pulled the Razor Beaks back into this corridor so that he could pull the Tigers through the wall, which he ends up doing, but then he baits the charges into the bear on the right hand side. So that whole pack comes in and that is definitely a wipe. Stuff like this is easily done here and there, like everybody has their moments so you can't really blame him too much. We run it back though, still probably timeable even after that wipe. Again, we tried to skip the bears. The tank dies on purpose because he didn't have an invis pot. I have no idea what happens here. It doesn't look like any of us are in combat. The druid reses the tank and then the tank gets up, presses immo aura and then the bears just run over and kill us all. Like surely there's no way the immolation aura hits from there. But that is the key over. I don't know what just happened there. I have no idea how the bears ended up pulling. I guess it was a bug. It looked like the immolation aura pulled them. But yeah, I don't know. Next, we attempt a 25 rise with my boy Smacky. The tank did a massive pull at the start. Corroding Volley did end up going off and killed all of us with all of our lust and cooldowns up. Far from ideal, there was lots of sanguine healing in these pools as well. And then after we wasted time killing the Maiden and the Keeper, healing them up multiple times through sanguine, the tank just decided to leave. The key probably wasn't timeable anyway. I mean, we're at 13 deaths at this point. I feel like 95% of Rise is deplete before tier or even on tier. Once you get past that first bit, it's kind of smooth sailing from there. But yeah, that first area can be very, very scuffed. Back to a 25 Dark Heart Thicket then. 
This time we are going to time this one. I'm not going to go fully in depth because we've had so many dark hearts in this episode. The rogue took short shroud to double shroud before and after the first boss. We're going to skip the bears and also some of the dryads and um, blossoms. The monk seems super aware on this first boss. I was baiting the leaps and he was using his trinket to help me out. He was using life cocoon when I didn't have defensives up. He just seems super aware and on the ball. We played the Tormentors really nicely. We had great AoE CC coordination. We had AoE stuns from the Monk and the Demon Hunter. We got Blinding Slee and also Blind. Just a, re just a really well played pull. And then we had a few deaths towards the end of the last boss. I don't know why it's always the case, but it seems to always be the case that somebody dies towards the end. I guess here specifically, he had 10 stacks to the buff and then he just one shots the Demon Hunter with Nightmare Bolt. But we do end up timing the key with five minutes left. We had a really nice group in here. I actually got out pumped by the Demon Hunter as well, which is something you don't see very often. But yeah, really nice group. We got five score out of this, taking us up to 3,331. The final key for this episode then, I've saved the best till last. This is the return of somebody that we've done a dungeon with before. I don't know if you guys remember this tank, Makalele. But he did make an appearance in a 24 Blackrick hole before. The key was super smooth and he still managed to find a way to be very toxic. And a leopard never changes their spots. I gave him the benefit of a doubt so he got into the group. I'm pretty sure he clocked me already and he knew that it was me. But we both didn't say a word to each other. I was the last in the group on a Tyran week. I was not sure where to lust here so I ended up just saving it for Tia. Tia is a scary boss and the first pull was too small to warrant a lust in my opinion. I stood in the orb of contemplation like a bot. Sometimes it goes across the map and it takes forever to come back. So I just completely forget about it. And yeah, on the way back, I stood in it. And then this is where the tank's true colors really did shine. On tier, we are all stood towards the edge to bait out the infinite annihilations. The tank has got plenty of room for the frontal. As you can see, it's being baited outwards towards the edge of the room. But for whatever unknown reason, he completely swings the boss round in my direction following the dh as well <laughs> and it just takes us both out i have no idea what was going through his brain here if he just stays planted and the demon hunter stands on him that is a demon hunter's fault but swinging around a frontal 90 degrees as the cast is going off i don't think it's to play the best part is somehow he tried to blame it on us as well he said that we positioned behind him but he literally swung the boss round as the cast was going off so i definitely wasn't behind him where it was originally placed but yeah we all know what makalele is like bless him we ended up running the boss back the key was definitely already depleted at this point so my concentration was completely lacking i was just kind of memeing with chat now about this tank i wanted to get the last orb of my trinket here and i end up baiting an infinite annihilation towards the middle not great by me, but definitely not the reason that we deplete this key. I think we all know the reason of the depletion of this key right now. <laughs> one by one, everybody ticks out and that is the key over. I then had a little back and forth with my good friend Makalele. He even decided to show up in my Twitch chat and try and reason with us as to why he was not the problem and I was the problem apparently in that key, by the way. So yeah, safe to say I shouldn't have given him the benefit of the doubt and I will not be doing any more keys with this bot in the future. <laughs> it's just insane that he tried to blame us for that frontal and killing us on that first ball there. But that is the pugging life, eh? I'm sure he's watching this video and I'm sure he'll leave a lovely little comment somewhere that I'll probably instantly delete. So I wouldn't even waste your time, buddy. But if you guys did enjoy this episode, then please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe to your boy. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.